Hi, my name is Johanna and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite bottles, Givenchy Gentleman from 1974 and the nose is Paul Leger. This is probably, potentially, one of the original splash bottles here. And when I bought it on eBay, even though I know you can't trust what they say, they said that this was a uh, first owner and the person that was selling it was probably selling it from an estate sale. So I got this. I've used a little bit of it, but it did come like, I don't remember where the fill line was when I got this, but yeah. This is the original Gentleman. There's a newer version of Gentleman that I've heard but not tried. I've heard that it isn't the same as this one. I paid $95 including shipping for this bottle in January of 2023. It says made in France on the bottom and then some numbers. It says the word bottle and two fluid, two fluid and uh, the word bottle. Eau de Toilette. When I smell the test strip, I smell woody and patchouli. I also get something that's probably aromatic, but it's a scent that I, when I, when I get these notes, it reminds me of an older, older, older man. I think it's aromatic. And the patchouli makes it seem so rich and dirty, very dirty. And there are aldehydes in here. I always reconsider about doing a doing a video on a fragrance that's extremely hard to find, expensive to find, the formulation that is the one. You know, I, I do debate about the worth of doing these videos uh, on a fragrance like this, but I am more into the history and I'm more into preserving and making it accessible to people. So it's not like, it's not like you're gonna necessarily go out and buy this fragrance and you might. You might get one of the spray bottles from the 80s that are still online. And I think that's the same formulation as this one. That's the one that's pictured on this picture that Fragrantica has. I believe that's from the 80s. So Gentleman by Givenchy is, is listed at least two different times and I believe that re reflects the different formulations. So there's the newer formulation and then there's this one. And the main accords are, first one listed is woody, patchouli, earthy, animalic, warm, spicy, musky, honey, powdery, leather, and then mossy. And the notes, honey, cinnamon, rose, tarragon, bergamot, lemon, patchouli, cedar, orris root, and jasmine. And in the base, patchouli again, leather, civet, oak moss, vetiver, musk, amber, and vanilla. With these notes in front of me, I can tell that I smell the honey and I can smell the civet. In fact, that might be some of what I was talking about when I said it smells like a very old man. Also the musks that they're using could potentially be causing that and the leather. 
There's also amber and vanilla in this fragrance and oak moss. Oak moss can also, especially the old fragrances, the oak moss can make it smell kind of like you would imagine an old person smelling. Oak moss can do that. And vetiver. Vetiver can give kind of an oily, oily aspect, at least for me. And vanilla. There's vanilla in here. That was nice. They did that just for me, you know. I'm just kidding. They did the vanilla to smooth things out. Because the patchouli, they, you know, they put so much patchouli in here that it's rough. And they're smoothing it out with the amber and the vanilla. I think that the vetiver can also smooth things out a little. And the florals, jasmine, rose. Wow, just jasmine and rose. You know, they put rose and jasmine in a lot of older masculine f focused fragrances. And I think it's good, it really works. It doesn't smell even slightly feminine. This is one of those fragrances that when I smell it and try to wear it, I think, do I really have any business with this? You know, do I have any business with this? But I love this bottle and I love this fragrance. I wish it was a spray, but I just don't want to decant it because I love the bottle so much. This fragrance also has tarragon. I'm not recently familiar with the note of tarragon. It's been a while since I used it in any of my fragrances. So I'm not sure if I smell it. There's also cinnamon in here and they have it listed as a top note. That brings a warmth to this fragrance and a fullness. And then the lemon and the bergamot, the lemon and bergamot together. Those are going to make it slightly brighter and open the fragrance up a little, but it's not that bright. It's not a very bright fragrance. I don't think it's dark, but I don't think it's bright either. I was just having an image. I used to work with elderly people doing, like helping them driving them around, just being a companion to them. And this does remind me of that. I worked with several older men and they probably wore things that were similar to this or their belongings that were in their rooms were probably scented like this kind of thing. And I'm imagining that there are probably other fragrances around the same time that came out, you know, in the 1970s that had a similar vibe to this one. I think this one's particularly nice because of the patchouli, probably. I love the patchouli in here. The honey, the honey is so nice too. You know, honey is sweet and it's very syrupy. It's almost, I was gonna say caramelized, but not, not that syrupy. And I think that smooths things out too. And, and it brings it together almost like an adhesive. Yeah, I think he did a great job with this fragrance. I wonder what else Paul Lager did. Says the company that he works for is Fermanish. And it says that, well, let's see how many fragrances, not many. Only three fragrances in the database from Fragrantica. From Cacharelle, there are two. Anai Anai and Anai Anai Perfume Concentrate. And then Gentleman by Givenchy. I don't think he's still around. I, I highly doubt that he's still around. These, these fragrances were all done in the 1970s. So he's probably very well seasoned by the point that he made this fragrance. Some fragrances that people say gentlemen reminds them of are Boss Number One, 
by Hugo Boss. And Lapidus Poor Home by Ted Lapidus. Now I put these on a scent strip and I certainly agree that Boss Number One smells much more. Now Boss Number One came out in 1985. The nose is Pierre Wargny. Sorry if I'm not saying that right. Yeah, so Boss Number One smells quite a lot, quite similar. And then Lapidus. You know, Lapidus has more, Lapidus has some spices that aren't, are not the same in here. Yeah, so Lapidus Poor Home has pineapple, lavender, artemisia, juniper berries. I think it was the juniper berries and the artemisia that I'm smelling. Lemon, basil, bergamot, honey, incense, pine tree. Yes, that I do smell. The aromatic aspect of pine. Rose, Brazilian rosewood, jasmine, caraway, orris fruit, lily of the valley, and pettigrain. And in the base, there's tobacco, patchouli, oak moss, musk, amber, sandalwood, tonka bean, and cedar. Yeah, so they put tonka bean in this fragrance, and in the other one, gentlemen, they put vanilla. And so those are gonna have way different effects for the whole fragrance. They share patchouli, but not as much patchouli. They don't share tobacco. They share oak moss, musk, amber, and cedar. They also share rose and jasmine and honey. I think that when people say that it reminds them of gentlemen, I think maybe the honey and the oak moss are influencing them in that way. Because if you put honey in something, it sometimes just really, it colors the fragrance in a way that it makes you feel like, you because know, honey isn't that common in fragrances. So it makes you feel like maybe you've smelled that before. It's familiar. Well, I wish I could say more. I wish I could tell you about the man who used to own this. Um, I can definitely imagine him. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.